personal history was made at a Strauss and Co. auction when Jane Alexandra's important sculpture, United or rather Untitled, sold for 5.5 million rand. This sets a new record for a South African sculpture. Stephen Waltz, MD for Strauss and Co. Fine Art Auctioneers as well as Consultants, joins us now for more. Stephen, looking at uh, this uh, venture and this piece selling for uh, a record price, how does this come about? And I take it you were at the auction? I was there, I was actually the auctioneer oh. <laughs> to, to add to the situation. Um, I think we're, we're in a funny situation where contemporary art is rapidly overtaking the older school, if one might use that term. Uh, and I think it, it, it was a wake up call, really. The previous highest price was for the South African sculptor Anton van Vaux, uh, a bronze which sold for two million. So we've more than doubled the figure. And uh, there's no comparison between the two in terms of style or subject matter, really. It, it's, we're talking a century apart, essentially. Um, so there is, I think part of the reason is that there's a new generation looking at new works, looking at their own time mm. rather than going back. There's always their back market, so to say, but, but there is that, that, that situation. And it's a phenomenon worldwide. It's not Rembrandt at the top of the pile, it's Rothko and people like that at the top of the pile. Andy Worrell, over 100 million last week. Uh, it, it's, it's a changing world now. If Van Vaux were to be auctioned now, you said uh, it's a different kind of generation. So, I mean, is, is that saying that Van Vaux is, is now worth less or we just need an auction to tell us whether he's worth less? Well, the, the two million is not that far back. It's a mm. year or two back. Mm. Um, I think, it, you know, it's a totally different buyer. We're looking at a totally different, you're looking at, as I say, the older, the older school, not that it's old necessarily older people, but, mm. but people collecting the, the earlier in the 20th century rather than going into the 21st century. I think there's very much an inclination towards the contemporary, but it's a very, it's a, there's a strong sifting process, just as there is on the previous. Now, every generation, some artists fall away, yeah. uh, and only the very best come through to the next. And, and this is what's part of what's happening. Yeah. Just on that, you mentioned a cyclical change that's taking place with regard to interest in a different kind of mm. art forms and new artists. Is this in line with the international trends, perhaps? Very much so, very much. But part of the problem, you know, if you came into collecting now, all the good works mm. of the previous generation are tied up in, in galleries and in collections that are not easily going to be disposed of. So you've got to be looking at the next generation to be buying the best. Um, and that's really what's happening. What, uh, what have you learned, Stefan, in all your long time as an auctioneer, and you have to know the work that you're auctioneer, mm. auctioning and, and so on? Of course, it's very difficult because if you saw Jane Alexander's work, say, 20 years ago, or William Kentridge 30 years ago, how do you know? How do you pick the winners when they're not winners yet? Well, well <laughs> a little feather in the cap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I was still Sotheby's yeah. and celebrated our 10th birthday party in the early 80s, we actually got Kentridge to do our menu for the dinner party and ironically half the guests left theirs lying on the table when they went home, signed and numbered. <laughs> so You've still got those, I I've presume. I've still got <laughs> some of them. <laughs> but, but that's the point, Kentridge wa was just, an, he wasn't just a another, name. Just a young man trying mm. to break into the art market. Mm. You know, your chances of hitting success are very, very small. I mean, ironically with the Jane Alexander, it was bought by a fellow student at Wits with her pocket money. Many figures are rumoured, but the consensus is it was under 2,000 Rand. Mm. Now that's not a bad return from 2,000 to 5.5 million in, what, some 20 years? Mm. The arithmetic can't cope with that. <laughs> <laughs> but that takes us back to the, the, the valuations of, of the different arts uh, that you have to, uh, I don't know, well, obviously it's an auction, so the mm. highest bidder takes the, you know, gets the best deal, but how, how do you value these kind of art forms? You, you, you take it on, Previous, you've got to look at previous performance rather than, and you might have, you'll take note of other outside, other auction houses, not only our own. You'll take note of exhibitions, you'll make note of publications. Very closely tied to fashion. Artists yeah. go through fashions, and, and it's a, ours is a relatively small market, so if uh, PNF is the flavour of the month. It doesn't take long for that market to become saturated. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what advice would you give, Stefan? Someone says, "Look, I'd, I'd, I quite like art, but I've never thought of it as an investment uh, class, and, and now I'd like to get into it." So you take a decision to get into it. What advice would you give to someone doing that? Stick to the gilt-edged. Don't be too. 
Chauncey, if I might use that expression, stick to the established artist names, stick to those, but always buy the best. Yeah. Uh, even if, you know, always, rather than buying a second rate work by a five star artist, buy a five star work by a second rate artist. Yeah. That's always going to be the collectible. Yeah. Even a lesser artist, a top work by him will always be in demand. Whereas lesser works, particularly in the times we're in now, the market's not easy. The art market's not easy at the moment. Yeah. We're selling the top. It's, it's easier to sell a 5 million rand artwork than it is a 50,000 rand artwork at present. Yeah. The 50,000 rand man has got other problems. Yeah. And we're sensing it very strongly in the art market. Is it true that when, when a work like this gets sold for that amount, all other comparable works immediately rise or fall in value, depending on whether the price well, is do. better than expected or not as good they as They do, expected. they do. And you know, to many, I think many South Africans didn't know the existence of Jane Alexander till this, this comes onto the market. It certainly brought her into the limelight. You might not necessarily be a buyer, but you're going to talk about her at a dinner party. There's the picture that we're talking about. Uh, mm. uh, it's a sculptor, it's a picture mm. of the sculptor. Okay. Five Mom. and a half million rand. Not easy man to live with, oh. <laughs> but he's, he tells you all about the times. You're a bit too young, but imagine yourself in the mid '80s. The tensions in South Africa on all sides. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't even black white anymore. It was. Everybody yeah. knew somebody's got to give. Somebody's yeah. got to break. There was concern from all sides, yeah. and he reflects it so well. And that's part of the success of the piece. Mm. It's not uh, a thing that you look at and think, now what on earth is she trying to do here? No. It comes out at you very and, and strongly. And she's a generation ahead of us all, effectively, mm. which is a sign of a very good artist. Mm.